Now we skip, uh, if we could, over his uh, journey into the Sudan, which is where he initially goes mm -hmm. after breaking with the Saudis and leaving, and bring him back to Afghanistan, which was presumably the place of his accomplishment and his glory. Right. Um, he's there with uh, some small number of followers initially, uh, and this is where his relationship with Zawahiri picks up steam. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the origins of Al-Qaeda as we came to know it uh, through this period of the mid-90s in which the plans begin to emerge for assaults and attacks on the U.S. and on the various enemies of Islam as uh, bin Laden defines them. Actually, Al-Qaeda was begun in, in August of 1988. August 11th is the first day uh, we see in print, in handwritten note, um, uh, minutes of a meeting of Al-Qaeda. So it was created just before the Soviets were withdrawing from Afghanistan. The idea was not that it was going to be a terrorist group. It was going to be something like a, 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 a Muslim um, foreign legion. They were going to chase the Soviets out of Afghanistan and into Central Asia. They were going to go down into Yemen, which uh, was partly under the control of a communist government at the time. That was what their mission was. They would have been nominal allies of ours. And uh, it was really in those Sudanese years that they, you know, when bin Laden was brooding over the uh, presence of the Americans in Saudi Arabia that he began to turn uh, Al-Qaeda into something else, which became the terrorist group. It wasn't until he got to Afghanistan once again, though, in 1996, that he declared war on America. And, of course, his vehicle is Al-Qaeda. Now, how's he going to wage war on, on America? You know, this is one of the reasons Americans at every level, all up through the intelligence world, had a hard time taking it seriously. A man in a cave in Afghanistan? Come on. Bin Laden really did have a plan when he created Al-Qaeda with the goal of attacking America. Uh, he wanted to bring us into Afghanistan the same way that the Soviets had gone in. And if you think about it, what happened when the Soviet Union withdrew in 1989, it fell apart. It dissolved, it shattered. Bin Laden actually believed that if he could provoke the United States into Afghanistan, it would meet the same fate. It would become the disunited states. And that would leave room for one new superpower, Islam, to regain its rightful place in the world. It's interesting, you mentioned the um, bemusement almost uh, of most Americans who would have come across this in the early and mid-90s, the idea that a man in a cave is somehow mm -hmm. capable of waging war on the United States. So there is this strong sense of belief that you describe in the book, that you track, uh, that the few people within the intelligence and law enforcement communities face when they try to bring this threat to the surface and to some broader recognition within the intelligence community. The design wasn't clear to the American intelligence. Um, had they thought about it, um, if they had imagined that, well, what he really wants us to do is to follow in the footsteps of the Soviet Union and then have the Muslim world pile in on us and create a clash of civilizations. If that had occurred to American intelligence, then I would think that our responses would have been somewhat different. Um, for instance, I think we would not have harassed him out of the Sudan area. When he was in Sudan from 92 to 96, we knew where he was. Uh, you know, and he was pretty much under the control of the Sudanese government. He was uh, a businessman. Um, when we told the Sudanese to get rid of him, and they warned us he was going to go to Afghanistan, we said, we don't care. Uh, 